Dear students, in today's lecture, let us make an attempt to know about insect pest control. Let us study the first chapter that is introduction. The expression of pest is used broadly to insects and other invertebrates like nematodes, mites, snails, etc., and vertebrates like rats, birds, jackals, squirrels, etc., that cause significant and economic damage to crops, stored produce, and animals. An insect reaches the status of pest when its number increases and inflicts significant damage. An insect may be a pest at one place or in one season, but may not be so at another place or in the next season. Therefore, being a pest or not is only a matter of insect numbers. In any crop ecosystem, if a pest can be controlled at a cost less than the expected market value of the potential increase in yield, the pest species can be considered as economic or controllable pest. This is also referred to as the economic threshold. For deciding this, the arbitrary limit can be fixed, such as the size of the population responsible for a 5 percent loss in yield and this level is called as the pest status. Therefore, if an insect causes a loss of less than 5 percent of the yield, the infestation is negligible. Insects which normally cause a loss ranging from 5 to 10 percent are said to be minor pests. Those which cause a loss of 10 percent or more of yield are called as major pests. The pest status of an insect species may be determined by number of ways. They are increase in the number of insects that is population level, change in the type of damage inflicted on the crop, more pronounced damage due to conducive climatic conditions, changes in methods of cultivation or harvesting. Example, pest incidence is generally more in pit system or leaf picking method compared to row system or old shoot harvest method of mulberry. Fluctuation in the market value of the crop. Example, the cocoon lots containing UG pierced cocoons fetch fewer rates than good cocoon lot. Let us study the second chapter that is time of application of pest control measures. From the point of view of pest control, there are two threshold levels in the pest populations damage threshold and economic threshold. It is also known as action threshold. The damage threshold is the level of pest populations above which crop losses occur and below which pest populations are of no significance. The economic threshold is the pest population level much below the damage threshold at which control measures should be initiated to prevent the population reaching the damage threshold. The economic threshold could be determined by monitoring and sampling the pest numbers and its natural enemy numbers present per leaf. If the natural enemies are too few compared to the pest, control measure that is spraying may be adopted. Another way to determine economic threshold is to first find out the damage threshold by ascertaining the relationship between pest density that is numbers and yield from 0 to the highest level increased at different times throughout the growing season. The pest density at which the yield just starts to be affected will be the damage threshold and control measures must start below this density. This point has to be separately determined for different pests. Let us study the third chapter that is prior information needed for pest control. An important objective of the pest control is to obtain maximum destruction of insect pests by minimum use of insecticides. In order to achieve this objective, prior information of the following is necessary. Identification of the pest species. This is an important first step towards a successful pest control because the correct that is scientific name of the pest provides the key to all published information and it including control measures. For identification of the pest, services of experts and scientific agencies should be utilized. Information on pest life. 
life cycle. One should know the time that is season of the pest development, its developmental stages from egg to adult, duration of life cycle and number of generations that is broods per year and method of overwintering. Habit This covers aspects such as stays causing injury, type of mouth parts, mode of feeding and plants attack. Plant host range This includes information on the host range, preferred plants and alternative plants that can act as reservoirs for the infestation. Natural enemies It is desirable to know the parasites and predators of the pest. Necessary help in this regard can be obtained from the scientific agencies or institutes. Mobility Extent to which the pest can move is also important to know for a thorough control. Decision to adopt control measure As mentioned earlier, a control measure should not be started at the mere site of the pests. It should only be done when the pest has crossed the economic threshold. Choice of the control measure An integrated approach is the best method of pest control. However, if this is not possible for lack of expertise and facilities, insecticides may be employed. Use of insecticides For this, following considerations may be kept in view. Choice of insecticides It should be based on the type of mouth parts the pest possess. A persistent organic chlorine is good for the insects with biting and chewing type of mouth parts. While a systemic organophosphorus insecticide is effective for the insects having piercing and sucking type of mouth parts. Efficiency of Insecticides Factors that adversely influence the efficacy of insecticides should be kept in mind. Likewise, some insecticides lose their activity that is, they are incompatible when mixed with other insecticides. Dose of Insecticides Only recommended strengths of dust and sprays should always be used because excess of insecticides will control no more than the recommended dose or strength. In fact, it may do harm and cost more. Time of Insecticides Application Insecticides should be applied in the morning or evening hours when the weather is calm or else they will spread to unwanted areas and also may not hit the target. Precaution before insecticides use. Before application of insecticides, it must be made sure that there are no pollinators like bees in the areas. For the same reason, insecticides should not be applied during blossoms when bees are likely to be at work. Application for borers An early application of insecticides should be carried out for borers to destroy the egg-laying females and the first instar larvae of the pest which stay out only brief period after hatching. Insecticide sensitive plants Cucurbits and solanaceous plants are sensitive to arginochlorins and hence should not be applied. Time lag After application of insecticides, a time lag that is 7 to 10 days in the case of arginophosphates and 20 to 30 days in the case of arginochlorins should be given before consuming the produce. During this period, the insecticides will get degraded and become non-toxic. Help of Farm Scientist Take the help of a farm scientist to improve upon the method of pest management. Further, farm product always fetches better price if it is uninfested and healthy looking. Pest Control Measures There are two ways in which insect pests are controlled, that is natural control and applied or artificial control. In natural control, the control goes on in nature without the intervention of man, while in applied control, it is brought about by the agency of man. Let us study the first one that is natural control. Natural factors that keep a check on pest populations are climatic factors, natural barriers, natural enemies and diseases. Climatic factors Temperature, humidity and day length that is photo period directly affect the populations of both the pests and their host plants. The seasonal development of phytophagous insects 
is closely correlated to the development of their host plants. This correlation is exploited by man to control pests to some extent. Climate also restricts the dispersal of pests to particular localities or else they would spread far and wide. Natural barriers. Natural topographic barriers like mountain ranges, large bodies of water that is seas, oceans and deserts prevent migration of pests from one favorable area to another. But for these barriers, the pests would perhaps have been able to counter the adverse effects of climate and keep on breeding by migrating to climatically favorable areas as soon as the weather conditions in the native place turned unfavorable. Apart from checking insect migration, these barriers affect the climate itself. And so, the ability of the pests to live in changed weather conditions. For instance, insects live in the most windward side of a mountain will be quite different and incapable of living on the dry leeward side even if they had the opportunity to migrate. Similarly, insects living near large bodies of water get adapted to humid conditions as they cannot live in drier conditions. For the same reason, soil types also limit the distribution and multiplication of soil insects. Natural enemies. There is not a single group of vertebrates starting from fishes up to mammals which do not feed on insects. These animals keep insect populations under check to a great extent. Among species themselves are a large number of entomophagous species that either capture and devour other insect species that is predators or lay their eggs in or on the body of other insects that is parasites to enable their progeny to get a ready supply of food on emergence. Diseases like all living beings, insects are also attacked by microbes referred to as entomogenous pathogens that produce fatal diseases in them and thus keep a check on their populations. These pathogens belong to viruses, rickettsia, bacteria, protozoans, nematodes and fungi. Second one, applied or artificial control. The different methods of artificial control can be grouped into cultural, mechanical, physical, legal, biological, genetic or autocidal and chemical methods. Depending upon whether these measures are taken as a preventive step before the actual occurrence of the pest or as a curative step to eliminate the insects after they gained a foothold in the crops. The control methods are termed as prophylactic or preventive and curative or direct methods respectively. Irrespective of whether such measures are through cultural, mechanical, physical, legal, biological, genetic or autocidal or chemical means. Prophylactic or preventive methods. These control measures are effective especially in certain pests which are known to occur in an area year after year or season after season and these measures are field and plant sanitation, regular removal of weeds, grasses and pest affected parts of plants. Examples, damage due to spiraling whitefly, mealybugs, thrips, grasshoppers, etc. can be minimized by field sanitation. Use of pest free or healthy cuttings for fresh plantations. Planting material serve as a carrier of pest material for next generation. Examples, leaf roller, scale insects, stem borers, etc. Growing of pest tolerant varieties. Use of pest tolerant varieties minimizes the level of infestation. Examples, MR2 variety of mulberry for powdery mildew, Mysore local for thrips, etc. Other prophylactic measures like Treatment of seed material with chemicals, examples termites, root rot, etc. Swabbing tree or plant trunk to ward off bark caterpillars or scale insects. Application of tar to stems or trunks of trees to prevent 
termite damage. Periodical disposal of moth pierced and cut cocoons in drainage. Adjusting the time of planting or rearing. Curative or direct methods. First one, cultural methods. Cultural methods are simple agricultural or farm practices that man has learnt by his long experience as a farmer in order to keep the pest populations down. However, the methods at best act as prophylaxis rather than a complete cure that is control and therefore are suitable when used alone for low unit value crops. Nevertheless, they cost nothing except labor, are convenient and without hazards. The methods included under these are furnished below. Crop rotation. If the crops are rotated, that is the same crop is not grown successfully on the same field, it aids in the control of pests. This is because the pests of the preceding crop would not affect those of the following one. By the time the cultivation of the crop is repeated, its pests would have perished for want of their natural host plants. Crop rotation usually affects those insects which have a limited host range and are relatively immobile in some stage of their development. Crop location. Crops of adjacent fields should be so chosen that the pest or pests of any crop may not be attracted by those of the other. Mixed crops would produce the same effect. Trap crops. Small plantings of a susceptible or preferred crop may be grown near a major crop to act as a trap. Pests accumulated on this trap may then be killed by suitable means that is either use of insecticides or flowing or both. Tillage. Tillage tends to reduce soil insects and those which pass any of their developmental stages under the soil. Altered timings. In case where the susceptible stage in the crop's life or infesting stage in the pest life is brief, altering timings of sowing and harvesting can be effective as a control measure. This keeps the susceptible stage of the pest and the infesting stage of the pest separated, resulting in the death of pest. Clean culture, keeping the fields free from weeds, as weeds may act as temporary alternative host plants and the removal and burning of crop residues tend to kill pests like beetles and caterpillars that hibernate in plant debris. Soil manuring and fertilization. Proper manuring and fertilization of soil produces healthier plants which are better adapted to withstand attack of pests. Pruning and thinning. Pruning of the old, damaged and weak portions of plants encourages growth of new shoots which are healthier, stronger and relatively pest resistant. Destruction of crop residue. After the harvest, the crop waste should be burnt so as to destroy the infesting pests. Borers in particular of the preceding crop in order to protect the new crop. Growing resistant plant varieties. Use of resistant or tolerant variety of crop, of crop to pests makes the plant to avoid tolerate or recover from injuries inflicted by insect populations that could cause damage to other that is non-resistant plants of the same species under similar conditions. Second one, mechanical methods. Methods employing manual devices and machines are included under mechanical control. These are time consuming and costlier, but give immediate results. The following are some of the methods practiced under this category. Hand picking, usually large sized insects that is caterpillars, beetles, bugs, etc. could be hand picked and drowned in a kerosinated water or killed by insecticides. Shaking or beating of branches. A tub of kerosinated water could be kept under the infested plant whose branches could be shaken or beaten with a stick to make the pest drop into the tub. Banding. Banding devices could be employed to prevent insect pests climbing to the treetops 
so as to descend back to the soil to lay eggs. Wire gauge screens, the stems or fruits could be surrounded by wire gauge screens to prevent attacks particularly of borers. Digging of trenches, some insects like nymphs of grasshoppers and locusts have the habit of moving in bands. The habit can be exploited by digging trenches and letting the marching insects fall into them to be buried or killed by insecticides. Trapping, any number of traps can be devised to exploit a dominating or fixed instinct of an insect. Some of the devices used for trapping the insects are light, sticky, food, window pan, pheromone and sound traps. Flooding and draining. Insects that breed in soil can be killed by flooding the soil and those that breed in water can be killed by draining the water out of the fields. Third one, physical methods. Physical methods involve manipulation of temperature, humidity and the use of radiant energies. These methods are particularly useful for destroying the stored grain pests with the help of cooling, heating and radiant energies like radio frequencies, infrared rays, visible light and ultraviolet rays and ionizing radiations. Fourth one, legal control. Legal control is the lawful regulation of the spread of pests from one state to another or from one country to another. This involves the observance of animal and plant quarantine and their terminal inspection during import and certification during export. Fifth one, biological control. The successful control of a pest by means of other living organisms that is parasitides, predators and pathogens that is encreased and disseminated by man is called the biological control. In this method, the natural enemies are introduced, encreased, multiplied by artificial means and disseminated by man with his own efforts instead of leaving it to nature and thus differ from natural control. The natural enemies infested or infected include some of the insects themselves both parasitic and predatory. Disease causing viruses, bacteria, fungi and protozoa, parasitic nematodes and predatory vertebrates. Genetic or autocidal control. The basic principle in genetic control of insects is to utilize factors which will lead to reproductive failure. Genetic control of insects is not limited to the use of insects sterilized by radiation or chemicals, but also include cytoplasmic incompatibility, induced sterility, hybrid sterility, etc. Chemical control. Control of insects with chemicals is known as chemical control. Insecticides that is chemicals which kill insects are the most powerful tools available for use in insect pest management. They are highly effective, rapid in curative action, adaptable to most situations, flexible in meeting changing agronomic and ecological conditions and economical. Insecticides are the only tool for pest management that is reliable for emergency action when insect pest populations approach or exceed the economic threshold. A major technique such as the use of pesticides can be the very heart and core of integrated systems. Chemical pesticides will continue to be useful in the pest management program. There are many pest problems for which the use of chemicals provides the only acceptable solution. Contrary to the thinking of some people, the use of pesticides for pest control is not an ecological sin. When their use made on sound ecological principles, chemical pesticides provide dependable and valuable for the biologists. Their use is indispensable to modern society. Insecticides are toxic chemicals which if indiscriminately used may prove hazardous to life and environment. They should therefore be applied with the following considerations in view. They should only be applied when the insect populations have crossed economic threshold and not merely at the site of a pest. The timing of application should as far as possible coincide with the developmental stages sensitive to insecticides. Farmers 
laborers and cattle in the area of population should be made to live before application. Insecticides should not be applied during the period of blossom so as to protect pollinators, bees in particular. A safe interval should be given between the application of insecticides and harvesting of crops. Eighth one, recent trends in pest control. Control of pests has been aimed to be brought about by newer concepts without disruption of the ecosystem and these concepts constitute mainly the integrated control and the various methods that bring about reproductive suppression rather than mortality of an already existing population. These means are radiations, chemosterilants, antibiotics, hormones, chitin inhibitors, pheromones, chiromones, plant products, etc. The study provides insight into the determination of insect species becoming pests, time of application of pest control measures, background knowledge about pest control and methods of pest control to keep the insect pests under check to prevent the damage and harvest better crops.